so much. <laughs> is it bright? <laughs> I, wa I want to welcome Benoit Vigado from uh, Artifact Studios. And uh, thank you so much for coming to Busan, to Korea. Welcome. And uh, uh, thank you joining for being invited. And uh, hello, everyone. I'm really, <laughs> really bad in Korean, but I know to do this. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing I know, so that's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. I know you're a busy man. Uh, well, welcome, and um, obviously, Artifact Studios uh, has done so many things so far within a short amount of time. Uh, first of all, we'd love to get your brief introduction, um, who you are, uh, Artifact Studios. We'd love to hear an introduction about Artifact Studios and how you started and how far it's come now. Okay, because I didn't read your question in advance, yeah. so this is a surprise for me. So I'm Benoit, I'm French, as you all guessed. Uh, <laughs> I'm one of the three co-founders of Artifact. I'm in charge mainly of the general strategy, partnership, and, uh, and forming the team. I'm the one who, who brought all the team together. And it's one of the most important things about what you're doing. Can you hear me well in the mic? Or should I, put I can hear this? you. Oh, yeah. OK, let's see. I'm really bad with mics. I should have taken <laughs> the K-pop mic. OK, it was for next time. You're good. But also, I, I did most of the team at Artifact. And when we created it, the goal was really to create the blueprint of what the brand of the future could be. Because I was really, I worked for brands all my life, for luxury brands, uh, a lot of gaming stuff, etc. Yeah. But I, I really understood that fashion brands and luxury were completely disconnected from the gaming culture, which is really big in Korea with esports, League of Legends, and you know, all of that has been a while that this is a core part of culture in Korea, for example. But all these brands were totally disconnected from that, what I think is the next big culture for, after hip hop. And when we created Artifact, we thought, okay, there's a way to make a brand that is really born in that gaming culture and as well in the crypto culture, with NFTs being like the ultimate medium for digital goods. Right. And we really wanted to create something that is really exciting. So when people ask me what is Artifact doing, I don't really like to give a description because the day I give a description, it means we became something stand up. Right. So our goal is to always get people the impression of getting early access to the future and get excited by what we do, and also really try to flip the tables around between the relationship between creativity and business. Because, you know, in fashion, there's always been, you know, it's all driven by the business and selling and, you know, following the fashion week and all this type of stuff, and it's very hierarchical. Or you have the creative director that's on top, and everyone is like little slaves under it, <laughs> not little slaves. <laughs> but so we really wanted to break that mold and also stop trying to consider our audience as consumers and really take, take them as active partners in what we do as the brand, you know, because we're also using NFTs, there are also some type of investors, which makes a kind of new type of audience that you deal with because they have expectations. And also, but we have expectations for them as well, because I'm not only expecting them to buy my stuff and make me money, I'm expecting them to build on top of what we do. And everything we do, we always think, okay, what is the committee gonna do with it next, right? So right, yeah. we created Artifact to be really inspiring the next generation of creators to really understand that you don't need to follow the existing rules and the old school way of the old the borders, guard, and, yeah. and that now anyone, if they got the right team and the passion and the energy, and of course if they are good, because if you're bad, <laughs> it's pretty hard, but you can really, in the day and age, and especially with the combination of culture and technology, you can achieve anything. So our goal is really to inspire that generation and make the coolest shit we can, you know, so that's... Yeah. <laughs> well, well said, I mean... Yeah, uh, you know... <laughs> well, I mean, when we talk, you talked about gaming and luxury and art and um, obviously all these borders, these traditional borders that have completely broken off, uh, yeah. especially within the Web3 space. And um, uh, for example, especially for me growing up, right? We grew up in the 90s, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, hip hop, like you mentioned before, it was all separate. You knew what they were wearing. Um, uh, punk rockers, you knew what they were wearing yeah. and what they were doing. Uh, artists, you knew they're, these, all these had borders, even within fashion. And so now everything's merging together uh, within Web3 space, especially uh, with Artifact. Uh, Showing, showing, showcasing that through your... Yeah, your, and I mean, and we've always tried, like, uh, we always say that we try to merge yeah, worlds, yeah. right? Uh, whether it is, like, digital and physical, and also bring all this culture together, like, yeah. the team of the three co-founders, like, we all have different age, like, we're all five years apart, so we combine 15 years of geek culture together, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of, you know, anime, video games, yeah. I grew up playing Magic the Gathering, you know, the, the card games. One of the other co-founders uh, grew up playing Pokemon cards, the other one, <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Right. So it's all about how you merge this together because, you know, we all grew up with internet and internet is all about having no borders right, right. And, and mixing all these things together and let people remix it as well. So we're really trying to embody this and encourage people to understand that there's no more rules today. Right, right. And, and if you have got the right vision and the right team, you can achieve anything. So, and fashion brands, what's interesting with them is that a lot of them have a very, very, you know, uh, 
amazing legacy. Some of them are 200 years old, you know, 100 years old. But I think that was the main thing when we started Artifact. I thought the legacy when you're a brand is actually a disadvantage because you have so much, you know, baggage behind you and amazing things behind you that it's very hard for you to take risk and actually try to do something really new and really fresh. So us were really trying to be that vehicle that is, you know, showing the way and, and breaking boundaries, in a sense. Oh, I don't know what was your question, but what Oh, no, yeah, like, that's I wonderful. I mean, that's, that's more than, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's good, more the best. Okay. Uh, well, definitely, I would love to hear something about what you've been doing now, your recent launch of Clone X, and uh, uh, the forging process, and how uh, Fidgetal, uh, Fidgetal so is Fidgetal is a very shit term, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I hate that term, so don't use it. I don't know if you use it in Korea. But, but uh, I mean, it's, it's becoming an industry term, so whatever. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. So uh, first, we'll love to hear first forging, about. you know, because we always thought, Everything we do, we need to start with NFTs. Right? Right, we need to right. start with digital because we believe that in the future, what you own digitally will be more important for you in an economic level and emotional level than your physical possessions. And it always needs to link back to that, right? But we were thinking, okay, but how the fuck do we do to link you know, what you have digitally to have some type of physical collectible to have? And the physical side, we always treated it as a very nice to have. And the inspiration behind this, I'm a big, big video game player. And when there's big video games that come out, I always try to buy the collector edition, right. where you get the statue, Assassin's Creed statue, all this type of yeah, stuff. Yeah. Fan of Elden Ring or whatever, I get the mask, all of this. And, and we thought, okay, like, how do we start to, to make some things physical that people can actually collect on their desk or you know, on their shelves for sneakers and stuff like that? And we were trying to find a term that I think now is becoming a type of industry term. And it comes from video game when you go see the blacksmith to augment your weapon, right. you're forging, right? Forging. And so, yeah, well, we really build the brand around that, about merging these two realities. And Clonex was very important for us because we started off with sneakers because we thought it was the most interesting asset to start with because it was already being traded as an asset, right? Right, right. And also, you were removing the friction of like having it to send it to StockX and da da da. da, da. <laughs> NFTs is verified, it's yeah. authentic, it's, it's a liquid asset, you can trade it on and off until one, one, one moment you want to get the, the physical version. But you know, we never wanted to limit ourselves to just making products and sneakers because I think what's very interesting today when you build a brand, you know, in 2020, 20, as we started 2020, mm -hmm. but in 2022 is that you don't need to limit yourself to clothes because clothes is always a way to augment or, you know, like uh, tell something about your personality and your life story. But the core thing in what we do digitally is the identity aspect. And so that's what we thought, okay, like we need to create avatars because that's like the ultimate identity layer you can have. Right. Uh, and so I think today fashion brands, us, we created a new type because yes, we did sneakers, we did clothes, we did jackets, all this type of stuff. But we did avatars because that's the core, you know, foundation of your identity on the metaverse. And then after you dress it up and you have wearables and all of this. And Clonex was really amazing because we wanted to create avatars. We wanted to make them full 3D because we all come from the video game industry. And even though there's a lot of talk about using things online and in 3D, you know, most of the avatar projects are not 3D based. So we did everything 3D. Everything made so that at some point we can use it as, as publishers are opening up their platform so that we have the 3D files ready in the different formats. And mainly we really wanted to work with Takashi Murakami. Uh, and also the strategy and what we do is very simple. We just only work with the things we love right. and only the people we admire. And of course, we're all fans of Murakami. We started the Avatar project with Clonex very early. Like, I think we started in May, uh, May 2021. What they, 2022 20, this year? Okay. 22, so yeah. May 2021, so last year. Yeah, 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 so last year. And we were like, oh man, I really, we, it would be amazing to have Takashi to work with this on, on, on with us. And he followed us on Instagram, and then we sent him a DM, like saying, okay, like, Takashi-san, we really love what you do, da, da, da. We got on the call, we showed him some of the early 3D renders we were doing, and all this research type. He was really interested. And thanks to that, we developed an amazing relationship, which is my favorite contemporary artist ever. Uh, and we still work with him today, and it was really amazing to work with such a legend and see his way of working with his studio and how in, in detail they are because it's all about quality. And he really understood that we had the same aspect towards uh, what we call digital craftsmanship. Because, you know, in luxury, it's all about the traditional craftsmanship, right, right. but actually 3D making and all of this requires a lot of skills that you can only find actually in the video game industry because the video game industry has been the only one using real-time 3D for a very right. long time. And now the VFX industry is actually starting to use real-time 3D with Unreal when it was before on the pre-render 3D pipeline. Uh, so I'll talk pipeline and stuff because it's a dev conference, so like it's, it's okay. <laughs> but, uh, so that's, yeah, we, we started this and it was, of course, a you know, big success. And, and what, what I'm most proud of with the Clonex community is that a lot of avatar projects are 
just you know 2D images on mm -hmm. Twitter and people talk and they, they all focus on the floor price and all of that. Us, we gave recently the 3D files to all the clones so that they can start to do their own content, and right. their own things. Some of them started to do VTubing. Some so of this them is how you're, it's very you're important engaging with well, your community. Sorry, yeah. But it's very important that you, you give tools to your community to mm -hmm. express themselves and to build on top of what you do because sure. I don't ever want to have a thousand people team. I hate big teams, I hate big companies. I mean, I mean Nike, it's okay, <laughs> Nike is cool. But, but I really don't want, we never had the intention to make something that is huge, you know, and we sure. like one business model to follow, because after you become a bit in, uninteresting. Yeah. But we know really well that today people are a lot smarter. You know, Kanye West, he said that the, all these kids are the new Einstein in a sense. But it's true because you, you will, and the, the, the reference we had was Valve Software mm -hmm. uh, that developed Half-Life, Team Fortress, all of that. And they understood very, very early that whatever they do, how, how good, you know, however good the team they had, and they're some of the best team in the world at Valve, they would never be as creative at their community, right? So right, it's all right. about how do you inspire them and build a foundation and innovate and then let it open for them to build on top because that's gonna do you know, a big, big, big value that no one else can compete with because from the moment you have a full community of creators and creatives that can build business and build value on top of your own brand, then you, you win, right? right so right. that's the focus we have since, since day one and, we, and every day we start to you know, continue to implement. 3D files with one step, we have other stuff in the pipeline, of course. <laughs> uh, so that's the, the goal, like always, make sure you give the tools to the community to add value back. Well, it, I mean, <laughs> what can I say? Yeah, I don't uh, say mean, what you want. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the community is definitely important, and uh, the process of you know definitely you, working with artists that you love, the brands that you love. Um, I mean, I'm sure you get no brands is same. So every brand went to talk to us. Yeah, we said no like a thousand times <laughs> because it's very simple. There's no strategies like if we like the brand, right. and also we always want to work directly with the creative director. I don't work right, with right. marketing people. We only work with the creative because collaboration normally, what's really good in collaboration is that you can do something that you can't do on your own, right? And right, the right. brand is bringing the expertise, you bring yours, and you never know what it's going to be until you make it, right? And to sure. me, that's what's exciting to me. Sure. And, and, and that's why we have a lot, we build a lot of collab the brand through collaborations with Ferocious, which is staple, you know, at the beginning. We have a lot of, you know, really cool collaboration in the pipeline that I can't talk about, but of course. really created really, really well. And I think it's important that you need to be careful not to dilute your brand too much because a lot of brands are like doing collaboration nonstop, you know, like Fendi and this and like Adidas and this. And you need to be careful not to overflow even though we're in the age of collaboration. To me, every collaboration is to have a specific purpose and whatever you create, it needs to become an icon, right? Especially sure. because all we do is on blockchain, 10 years or 100 years from now, people will still look at our stuff and it needs to still be relevant and still be seen as a moment where it opened a door to something. And everything we do is a way to start to open the door so that other people can go in, right? And now the good thing is that we have a lot more, you know, we have a lot more, uh, you know, power in a sense uh, because we're well known and we have access to a lot of things. And so it means we can open even more doors for people, right? So that's yeah, the, yeah. the whole approach uh, we have around that. Well, I mean, that's amazing uh, to hear, and uh, you know, Artifact is definitely leading the way within the creative community. There's so many people coming I forgot coming to give you a video, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, cool videos, I'm like, shit. Well, I had one more question, and um, we want to definitely see, obviously, the NFT platform is obviously something crucial to Artifact, and uh, uh, creating... Yes and, and no, because yeah. everyone wants to do platforms, so it's cool, sure. dress X, uh, good luck, by the way, with this. <laughs> but so, I think everyone is focused on platforms, because that's a very a Web2 model that sure. it's it's proof, yeah. but to me the most, the, the three most, imp uh, let's say two, like two most important things that first you need to build a brand. Yeah, of course. And it's very hard to build a brand that is, you know, relevant to the culture today without, uh, you know, alienating yourself and trying to just follow trends. And mainly you need to build a community. And what I really, really like about what we do is that we're still quite small, right? And Web3 is still quite small. Right, right. And we got to a point where almost every member of my community have interacted personally with them at least once, right? And, and that's the most important because the biggest representation of your brand is not your is not me talking at a random conf a random at a conference like this year, right? It's the people of your community every day, online and offline. And so you need to really shape your community to be people you, you like, you know, to represent your brand and to build on top. So brand building today is really 50-50 uh, between brand building and community building. And I think that's some of the mistakes some of the brands are doing. They always think about their 
community as consumers and really have them in Excel sheets and they need to have like quarterly results and yeah. da da da. But us, we're really in touch with them every day and we think about them every day and, and, and we get their feedback. Of course, you mustn't always listen to what they want because otherwise you might do some weird stuff. Yeah. Uh, but, but the community aspect is, I think, a core part of, of brand building today. And, and community management has been, I think, had a because of social media, people think it's just like replying to comments and stuff like that, but it's a very, very, very hard job. And what we're working on right now, I think I told you before, like the thing I'm very, very interested in is how to take some learnings from other industries, because again, we're creating something that is a new type of brand, some type of a hybrid. And I'm, I'm looking into the hospitality aspect, you know, like where right, people right. understand like about. the collector experience and all of this, and how do you bring this and combine it with Discord geeks? And how you you get you create that new type of profile in a sense, right? Just like we are trying, we we'll announce that soon. But like we're working with economists to start to analyze our economy because everything you do is feeding, you know, a big, big, big economic monster. So at some point you need to start to. Make, it's good to trust your gut, but at some point you need to start to look at the data <laughs> a little bit. But so that's yeah, that's the stuff we focus on uh, these days. No, not the platform. We have some platform plans. Uh, we have a lot of creators create. Creating on whoa, creating on on what we, we gave them, but the, the, the platform is not the pure focus for now. Like it's still about brand and community building and inspiring uh, everyone to build on top, and then after we'll open up the platform side, we'll see. Well, thank you so much, Benoit. Yeah, I appreciate no your time. I can uh, stay for more minutes if you want. It's good. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time, and uh, we look forward to all your projects and wonderful things coming out of okay, Artifact. Cool. <laughs> and uh, we'll end the session for today. Thank you so much. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you.